By the way, my wife is black, and um, even in today's era, people do get a little weird about interracial dating. Like, not you guys, I can tell. <laughs> a lot of interracial dating here tonight, like, white and off-white. <laughs> But people, what is it like, dude, what's with the black woman? Like, I don't know, because black guys don't do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Truth is, you know, people can't really get, seem to get their arms around. They're like, how is this black woman with this white guy unless there's this complicated backstory? Like, she's an R&B singer and I'm her agent. <laughs> I have to say, I was kind of intimidated when I first met her family. His brother's like 6'6", played college ball. He's black, too. <laughs> and, and he comes up, he's like, yo, man, I got a simple wingspan. Exactly. Who has a wingspan? <laughs> is he a transformer? <laughs> or maybe he's a giant black guy that actually had like nonstop flights to JFK? <laughs> New airline, jet black. <laughs> Flights are always late. <laughs> but, but, but the music is really good. <laughs> no, the truth is, I was kind of intimidated because, look, like all white people, I'm a little scared of black people. No, oh, let's be honest, I was in history class, saw the civil rights films, people singing We Shall Overcome, and you're never really sure, like, overcome racism or overcome white people. <laughs> now, as you heard, I'm Jewish. My wife converted to Jewish, not to white, she's still black. <laughs> but her family did, her family, they're still Christian, Lutheran, in fact. So when they come to our house for the Jewish holidays, when we celebrate, we modify some of the services so they'll feel more at home. So like at Passover, just coming up, when we do our Seder, we do it as as follows. When we were slaves in Egypt, and parts of the southern United States, <laughs> Moses and Dr. King, said, let my people go. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> when they refused, God and the NAACP <laughs> set forth a torrent of plagues and lawsuits. <laughs> and the people went out and they rode for years till they could find a homeland, a place where they could be free and enjoy self-determination. I speak, of course, of the land of Brooklyn. <laughs> where blacks and Jews roam free even to this day. Huge deal, obviously. She gave up Jesus, the Son of God, for me, Alex, <laughs> the Son of George. <laughs> and it's an enormous amount of pressure because now if I screw up, she's like, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. So now, even though I'm Jewish, I have to walk around all the time thinking, like, what would Jesus do? <laughs> and not easy to know. We live here in New York City 20 billion times a day. Something happens to make it impossible to be Christ like. I'm walking down 6th Avenue the other day, see all these beautiful women, their short skirts, their cleavage. What would Jesus do? I don't know. I know what I would do. I would reach out and try to touch a booby and then melt it to the ground. Now, my wife and I are very blessed. We just had a baby seven months ago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very excited for little Lenny Kravitz to grow up and be an international rock star. <laughs> and my wife found out she's pregnant. You know, everyone kept asking us, what's the gender? What's the gender? And my wife didn't want to know. She wanted to be surprised. I'm like, what kind of surprise? It's a boy or it's a girl. There are no other choices. <laughs> it's not like the doctor's like, ta-da, it's a penguin. <laughs> Although, because she's black and I'm white, possibly. <laughs> So we go off the first sonogram, we have doctors doing a thing. She says, you want to know how it looks? We're like, yeah, of course, make sure it's okay. She's like, it's a boy. We're like, no, we didn't want to know. She said, well, could be a girl. 
sometimes at this age the clitoris is so large you can't tell. <laughs> worse! Why are you worse? <laughs> like the kids can be exotic enough being biracial and Jewish, now it's got clitoris so large you can be a dick. <laughs> Kid wasn't even born yet. I knew his future would be a Shimeo Trini escort. <laughs> so look, like a lot of new parents, I was very nervous. So I, I asked one of my buddies with kids for some advice. I'm like, dude, help me. He's like, dude, can't. <laughs> kids ruin your life. But I wouldn't give up for anything. <laughs> Wait, ruin your life? Wouldn't give up for anything. You know who else says that? Junkies. <laughs> And the thing we were really worried about was the name, because you give a kid a bad name, especially a boy, you'll screw it up for life. So I asked my buddy, I'm like, well, help me with the name. He's like, just name it after your favorite parent. I'm like, man, I am not having a son named Mommy. <laughs> Besides, in the Jewish tradition, we don't name children after living relatives, because there's a superstition that when the older person dies, and God comes to collect the soul, God could get confused. <laughs> The all-knowing, all-powerful creator of everything <laughs> might not be able to tell the difference between the bundle of joy and a nine-year-old man who won't stop talking about the Great Depression. <laughs> now, I realize they're both bald and toothless. Have you ever smelled an old man? That's not new baby smell. Here's another difference. When babies go missing, people get upset. <laughs> I've never seen an old man's picture on the back of a milk carton. I mean, an old man goes missing, people are like... Well, was his time. But we wanted to pick a name that honored the best of both our cultures, African American and Jewish. So we got it down to two, just before the baby was born. And I'm actually curious to see what you guys think. No, seriously. LeBron, Einstein, or Kobe Seinfeld? Actually, we fought, about the, we fought about the last name, too, because my wife did, at first didn't want to take my name. She said, whose name will the baby have? I'm like, mine, of course. I'm the guy. That's the way it works. She's like, yeah, but I'm going to carry it for nine months. I'm like, yeah, but I put it in there. No, 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 look, look, look. You take your money, put it in the bank. Still your money. Finally, the baby was born last August, and you heard about brisses before. We're Jewish, we had a bris. Now, the thing is, very important, well, for those of you who aren't Jewish, bris is a circumcision plus a meal. <laughs> how do you find the guy in the moil? How do you find this man? Because it's very important that he do it right. He only gets one shot at this. How do you find a good one? You can't send him, you know, ask him to send pictures of his best work. <laughs> he sends you pictures, you both go to jail. <laughs> But our son was born, very, and we're very progressive parents, we decide to nurse. My wife gets a book on nursing, it's called The Womanly Art of Breastfeeding. There's a companion guide for the husband, it's called The Manly Art of Standing There Trying to Look Relevant. <laughs> but it's the life. Although I will be honest, I am worried a little bit about being the white dad of a black son. I mean, what if my son comes to me one day and says, Dad, I need some advice on being a black man in America. <laughs> What do I know about being president? <laughs> but it's true, I mean, there's, there's weird things that happen. Like, we're out with the baby the other day, and we're walking. Now, my wife is dark, has a big afro. I'm less dark, have no afro. The baby's kind of in the middle, between dark and light, kind of gray. And people look at us, they're like, What race is he? So I was like, master race. <laughs> Germans aren't using a title anymore. <laughs> but sometimes my wife goes out with the baby by herself and people are like, is he yours? Because they think she's the nanny. Oh. Yeah. And she got upset. She's like, what do I do? I'm like, okay, next time this happens is what you said. Is he mine? Yes. I found him on a bus right in the middle. <laughs> Is he mine? Yes, it was part of my government reparations package. 
They ran out of acres of mules. Actually, my favorite was, is he mine? Shh, don't tell. They don't know he's missing. Some people, I'll be honest, were against us having kids. They're like, mixing is bad, right? Like, mixing is bad. Now, these same people, by the way, have no problem mixing dogs. Like, don't mix a German Shepherd with a Chihuahua just to see what happens. I'll tell you what happens. You get a Nazi with a quick Latin temper. But you're like, mixing is bad. And not just white people, black people too. They're like, dude, you get somebody who looks black and acts white. Like, you know what? People who look black and act white are doing great these days. They're living in the White House. <laughs> Other people were totally into it. Oh, your kids will be beautiful. Biracial children are always gorgeous. Now look, I hope they're right. And so far, so good. But just because Halle Berry is hot, doesn't mean every time you mix black and white, you get art. <laughs> Sometimes you get an ugly white person who's just dark enough they look dirty, like they need to take a shower. <laughs> or look at me, I got a narrow face, thin nose, straight, make me dark. It's not a black dude. It's a Pakistani. <laughs> Truth is, I am worried about being a white dad of a black son. My last name is Barnett. What if my son comes to me in 17 and a half years as dad? The last time a white man named Barnett, I knew black people was 1962. The governor of Mississippi told James Meredith he couldn't go to college because he was black. Is that what you're gonna do? You're gonna stop me from going to college because I'm black? <laughs> like, of course not. Stop you from going to college because it's expensive. <laughs> you wanna go to college, when that financial aid form comes, you check that box mark, black. <laughs> Thanks guys, I gotta go.